So one of the most frequent questions that I get asked on stream is why I actually downgraded to a 240Hz gaming monitor after trying 360Hz on that ASUS monitor that you can see back there and that I reviewed about eight months ago. So today I wanted to make this video on my current thoughts and feelings on 240Hz versus 360Hz, as well as just my experience swapping between them and racking up a ton of gaming hours on them. After all, more hertz equals more better, right? Well, monitors are a bit more complicated than that, and it sounds counterintuitive, but if you're a sweaty competitive gamer, your best option right now might actually be a 240Hz gaming monitor. That also means that if you are currently gaming on a 240Hz display, I'd say that 360Hz is not worth the upgrade, depending on what your current monitor is. And what this mostly comes down to is understanding the difference between refresh rate and response times, and also understanding the competitive benefit of a motion blur reduction technique called backlight strobing. Refresh rate is simply the amount of screen refreshes that you're getting, and when expressed as hertz, that's per second. So 240 hertz is 240 screen refreshes per second, 360 is 360 refreshes, most of us know this. But all this value really tells us, granted that we do have a frame rate that can keep up with those refresh rates, is how many images are displayed on your screen per second. It doesn't tell you how clear those images are, like whether there is any ghosting or artifacting, and those are arguably arguably more important factors when it comes to actually hitting your shots. And the other thing here is the misleading increase that you might be expecting from upgrading from a 240 to a 360Hz display. Although that's a 50% increase in the amount of frames that you're getting per second, that's only a speed up of about 1.4 milliseconds between frame intervals. So going purely off numbers here, theoretically, the speed up from 120Hz to 240Hz is actually three times faster compared to 240 to 360, despite it being the exact same interval. Now on the other hand, response times are how fast an individual pixel can change color. Faster response times means less ghosting, which means a clearer image, but if the monitor has been tuned too aggressively to achieve these faster response times, then you'll often see overshoot or inverse ghosting, which is usually worse. My favorite test for this is the moving UFO test from blurbusters.com, seeing as it accurately displays the amount of ghosting and inverse ghosting different monitors have, and in game, that's what we care and notice the most, the display's behavior when when you're moving around. So this is the 360Hz monitor that I reviewed about eight months ago, the ASUS PG259QN. It uses an IPS panel, which I believe is the way forward for gaming monitors, and that means that colors are absolutely beautiful here and super vibrant. Now, rewinding eight months ago, when I first reviewed that monitor, I'd first told you guys that I couldn't tell the difference between 240Hz and 360Hz after doing a complete blind test in CSGO. And Curiosity, I did the same test again today, and my scores definitely improved, but I still can't confidently discern between 240 and 360 hertz. I think this clearly shows that there are some people out there who will notice a difference consistently, but it is a very, very slim difference, and it's still very easy to pick out the motion imperfections of 360 hertz. Now, a few months ago, I reviewed this monitor here, the Zowie XL2546K, and it absolutely blew my mind, specifically BenQ's backlight strobing technique called Dye which enables this monitor to have the clearest moving images that I've ever seen, and at the same time, it doesn't lower the monitor's brightness. By comparison, the 360Hz panel, which gamers would assume would be clearer since it's the faster, more expensive monitor, doesn't actually come close. That's not to say that 360Hz is a blurry mess, far from it in fact, but more so that the motion clarity benefits of 360Hz can't be fully realized today due to the IPS panel, and also without any good implementation of backlight strobing. Sure, with 360Hz, we are technically getting smoother motion, with 50% more frames being displayed in a given second over 240Hz, but I'd argue that the clearness of the image matters a whole lot more. You also don't need to be zooming around in Overwatch as Tracer to pick out the differences here. Games like Valorant, CSGO, and Apex have more than enough motion where this discussion actually matters. This is also to say that 240Hz is already so damn quick. For most of us, 240Hz will feel fast enough that we're playing in real time, with almost a 
immediate responsiveness. I'd also like to see what 360Hz would be like on a BenQ Zowie monitor with DIAC. I think at that point a seasoned gamer would definitely be able to tell the difference between 240 and 360Hz, and then the upgrade would be worth it for pro players at least. Also for those wondering, DIAC also has barely any effect on input lag as far as I can measure here with Nvidia's LDAT, as it's purely backlight strobing. We can also see here that yes, 360Hz does offer the lowest end-to-end -end latency, but with the difference of only 3 milliseconds or so compared to 240Hz, that's by no means a game-changing advantage. And another reason to not bother upgrading to 360Hz just yet is because the price difference between 240 and 360Hz is pretty massive. I still think one of the best esports monitors that I've reviewed so far is the MAG 251RX from MSI, which you can currently buy for $350 US. It's a super well-rounded IPS 240Hz monitor with a compact stand and clean design, and you could literally buy two of them for the price of a single 360Hz display. Now, if you do want the benefits of DIAC Plus with a Zowie monitor, like this one here, the 2546K, you're gonna have to spend about halfway between those two at about $500 US, which for a 1080p monitor is definitely expensive, but if you're a serious competitive gamer, I really don't think that there is a better option than this right now. So with 240Hz, you've got these really great value options that have even similar motion clarity to the 360Hz options of today. And then surprisingly, you also have the clearest and fastest feeling best of the best. And I just want to throw a real quick disclaimer out there. I am by no stretch of the imagination a pro gamer. Like many of you though, I just really enjoy first person shooters and I want to be as good as I possibly can at them in the free time that I have. That's even more of a case for most of us to stick with 240Hz or maybe even 144Hz for the time being. Speaking of which, if you are interested in finding out what the best budget 144Hz monitors are for gaming, I'll have a video on that coming out real soon. Other than that, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.